Hi, welcome back to Drexel Update on Inside Ambition. My name is Eva, and before we get started, I want to remind you all to like, comment, and subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel down below. Now, today I have a very special guest with us, Dr. Yuri Gagotsi, a professor here at Drexel University and the winner of the 2021 American Chemical Society Award in the Chemistry of Materials. He is also the founding director of the AJ Drexel Nanomaterials Institute and teaches here at the university. Thank you so much for coming today, Dr. Gagotsi. Uh, it's my great pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. So just to get started, could you introduce yourself a little bit personally and about what you teach here at the university? And then we'll start talking about your research. I'm a professor of material science and engineering. Uh, so naturally I teach uh, materials related courses. I teach uh, materials laboratory experimental techniques to undergraduate students. I teach a graduate course on carbon nanomaterials uh, plus, I also uh, teach many PhD students, master's students, postdoctoral students. So basically providing graduate and postgraduate education, preparing students to careers in academia, research laboratories of companies and national labs. So basically teaching goes beyond the classroom. That's awesome. And just to jump into your research, for those of you that don't know, Dr. Gagotzi's main point of research is a material called Maxines. So for our viewers who don't have a scientific background, could you explain what Maxines are and why they're so cool? Uh, those are actually uh, structures uh, you see uh, in the background. Those are very, very thin layers of material, atomically thin. Uh, some of you may be familiar with graphene, um, monoatomic layers of carbon, like carbon atoms aligned in a plane. And here we have three, five, seven layers of atoms where carbon or nitrogen are, atoms are combined with metal atoms, like titanium, for example, or moly. And they make a variety of materials because now we have a variety of elements. We can combine them in different proportions, build different structures, and basically create something like a Lego blocks uh, for future technologies, when we can take different materials, assemble them together, and make something exciting with the properties uh, we need. So, okay. and what is exciting, Maxines were discovered at Drexel about a decade ago uh, in our uh, lab. Uh, in collaboration with Professor Michelle Barzum, my colleague in the Department of Material Science and Engineering, and now a student at that time, uh, Michael Nagib, who is currently a professor at Tulane University. So this is a Drexel product. Wow, that's so amazing and something we dragons can be proud of, definitely. So Absolutely. if you were wanted to make something out of these vaccines, how do you physically create them? How are they produced? Well, they are produced in a chemical laboratory in chemical reactors. What we do, we take materials which are known as max phases. Those are layered ceramics. Imagine like a clay where there are layers, but they're strongly glued together. And actually Professor Barzum is the father of that field. So this is another uh, Drexel University uh, product. And we take this material like a ceramic powder, imagine. We drop it drop it in a chemical reactor in a solution, or it can be metal salt, uh, emulsion salt. And we remove atom by atom entire atomic planes. It's difficult to imagine. You're like a taking one atom after another out of the structure, and they fall apart in this very thin sheets of material with very unusual properties, which may be very useful for technology. Wow, that's amazing. So how quickly does this process happen? And what's the cost of creating a material like this? Well, uh, nothing happens quickly. It may take from hours to actually days to do this etching because uh, um, solution, uh, ions from solution need to like uh, get into very, very thin, like considered to be a tunnel, which is very long uh, and get atom by atom out. However, you put it in the reactor, you close the reactor, and the process goes on. So fundamentally, in large-scale production, 
many of this material should not be expensive. For example, let's take the first discovered maxine, which is a titanium carbide, titanium 3C2. So it has three layers of titanium bonded by two layers of carbon atoms. Titanium and carbon are among the most common elements on the earth. Carbon is everywhere. We built of carbon for many years. My research was focusing on carbon materials uh, and we still work on those materials. Titanium is also one of the most common metals. For example, titanium dioxide, which can be used as raw material for synthesis of maxine, is used to paint the walls. You eat it on donuts uh, with uh, uh, powdered sugar. So it's again, very, very common material. So when producing large quantities, this material expected to be inexpensive. And this allows it used to many, in many technologies. We make currently in the lab, maybe like a, up to 50 gram of material in one batch. And whenever you make something small amounts, it's expensive. Say, take a Coke can, mm -hmm. it costs a couple of cents. Now imagine making it out of, out of piece of aluminum at home. It will actually cost a lot. Just machinery to make it will probably cost millions uh, to build here. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, actually uh, how every material makes it to the world. Initially, it comes in small quantities, something very expensive, say aluminum uh, in uh, the 19th century was more expensive than gold. And now it is the most common metal. So as long as we make materials out of earth abundant elements, there is always a way to make them useful, inexpensive and widely used. That's awesome. So you mentioned some of the amazing potential of this material. What do you what are you most excited about that this material can do or is doing right now? Well, we're excited about certain things that it can already do. For example, it can provide the best electromagnetic interference shielding for electronics, cell phones, videos, whatever else. It can completely like block electromagnetic waves. And when we have many, many electronic devices now around us, computers, cell phones, wearable sensors, all of them need shielding, protection from electromagnetic noise around. Maxines have already shown to be the absolutely best material. We can even like a dip a piece of fabric into a solution of Maxine particles, it coats the fabric and you, for example, have a pocket where you can put a cell phone and no one will be able to bother you. You take it out, it works. It can also make antennas for 5G communication. Awesome. It can, it can be, be used in energy storage, battery supercapacitor, because it's even more conductive than graphene-based materials used in batteries and other applications. So those are few applications we are already excited about. But we're even more excited about future applications. Many other very interesting properties have been predicted, which we are still to check experimentally. For example, like a two-dimensional magnetism, making material for future spintronic devices. So we have not made it yet, but predictions uh, theory tells it should be possible. And again, uh, those exciting predictions keep us uh, busy. So we need to develop new vaccines. We need to study their properties. Wow, that's so awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. And if students want to learn more about vaccines or the Nanomaterials Institute, where should they go? Well, uh, they should uh, go to our website, Drexel Nanomaterials Institute website. Uh, they can find a nice video introducing the topic uh, on our web page. And of course, we always have students at all levels, starting from uh, freshmen uh, to PhD students in our lab. It's never too early to start working in the lab. And also, in addition to myself and my group, uh, several other research groups in material science department, uh, several other professors, Professor Steve May, our department head, Professor Michelle Barzum, whose name I already mentioned a couple of times, Professor Ekaterina Pomerantseva, others also explore Maxine. There are faculty in other departments, electrical engineering, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, 
physics uh, who are also involved in research in those materials. We collaborate with uh, professors in our medical school. So uh, almost independent in your area research, College of Media, Art and Design, Professor Genevieve Dion's Functional Fabric Centers. So Maxins are being explored by many departments at Drexel. So if you're interested, there are opportunities for you. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. And thank you so much for joining us, Dragons. That's all I have for you today. We thank Dr. Gagotzi for being our honored guest. And like I said in the beginning, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our brand new channel down below. And if you want to stay the most up to date to our information, make sure you follow us on Instagram at inside underscore ambition. Bye, Dragons. See you next week. Bye.